Beautiful. Hey, everyone. Welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello, and a special welcome to Chainsaw Guy, <laughs> <laughs> who is outside today chainsawing his way to happiness. <laughs> it's either that or a tiny F1 car. Yeah. It's just doing laps in the car park. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so if you hear the chainsaw in the background, we're very sorry. Well, I don't know who's more annoyed, uh, us at the chainsaw or him at the sound of loud electric guitar. <laughs> this is brilliant. Okay. Awesome. We've it's got to do it. We have to carry on. Yep. Um, on. Yes. Right. Number one, please subscribe. Click the button. Uh, it, it helps us out. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just subscribe on YouTube. It really helps us out. Thank you. Secondly, please go to that Pedal Show store. Pick yourself up some chainsaw oil. Uh, some nice steel gloves, other accoutrement to help with your chainsawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bee proof hats. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Uh, to be fair, if you can't hear the chainsaw, it might be because the noise reduction software on the voice mics has got rid of it. But okay, I, I somehow I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, that pedalshowstore.com. Um, okay, this is the second in the series of this these videos that we've done. Briefly, Dan, what have we got today? We have. Uh, an EL84 Vox style amplifier. The matchless. The matchless. And a 6v6 Fender style amplifier. The Mesa Cali Tweed. So we've got two amplifiers, which means we have two preamps, two power amps, and two speaker options. Our speaker options are the 1x12 Jensen Alnico speaker, 100 watt in the Mesa. Is it 100 watt? Yeah. Ooh. And uh, some vintage Alnico blues. If you are confused by seeing a Vox amp, the Vox amp is not being used at all. It's only its speakers that are being used. There you go. Why aren't we using the Vox amp? Because it has no effects loop. We need the effects loop for today's purposes. Yes. Um, check out the diagram on screen now, and that will explain. In the last video, we we kind of set it up and we talked a lot about. Uh, how this was working. In this video, we're just going to get to it and start the comparisons. Yeah. And, um, you know, here, the Mesa preamp with the matchless power amp into the Mesa cab, the matchless preamp into the Mesa power amp, into the Vox cab, etc., etc., and see what we can comprehend from those combinations of things. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that what are the main questions? The questions are. What effects do these individual parts of the amplifier have? Um, you know, we think we know what the sound of an EL84 two power two power valve is. We think we know what a 6v6 does. Do we really? Yeah. You know, when you when you partner them with other important components. Indeed. Um, all right, let's hear the amps in all their glory. Then you heard a bit of them from the top. Here is. Um, the matchless pre into the matchless power into the Vox speakers. Okay, we'll switch over to the Mesa. Thank you. 
The way they're set currently, I prefer this through the Mesa yep. and that through, through the, the matchless. matchless. There you go. And vice versa. Yeah. I didn't like this through the matchless at all. Right. Uh, didn't like this through the thingo. Uh, Less. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree what do you want, where do you want to go first then? Okay. I would like to hear the matchless pre into the uh, Mesa power amp into the Mesa speaker. Right. So what's interesting about that is neither of the master volumes on the amps work. Okay. So this is out of the circuit. Yep. The Mesa master volume is out of the circuit. The only way we can turn the Mesa down is by changing the output wattage. Because it has this <laughs> okay. very variable wattage. So if you play. Yep. Wicked. 10 watts and the match was pretty cranked. Play something you can remember and then we'll hear the box speakers. Okay. Schwang and I'll take it up to 30 watts. Tell you what's interesting about that, the matchless is fairly well cranked, so getting any more gain out of it. Oh, that is very interesting. It's gonna be quite tough, I think. I think there's some sort of mismatch going on there because the Mesa's at 30 watts. Mm. Should be wide open because the master is not in play. The matchless is fairly well cranked and that's quiet. I'll switch the Mesa back up to 40 watts. It 
sounds nice enough. They yeah, they sound some, great. Some rhythm parts, but it's not an enjoyable sound to play for me at all. Right. Because there's no, there's no. Just sounds really underpowered, even okay. though we're cranked at forty watts. That's very which interesting. I'm finding confusing, so I'm thinking that either the input return on the Mesa is really attenuated, mm -hmm. or the output of the Matchless is low, and I know that's not the case. No, the output of the Matchless is absolutely cranked. Just to put that in perspective a sec, we're going to just f switch the Matchless back to its own power section, bearing in mind this is 40 watts, this is 30 watts. Okay, not yeah. going to change a thing. I'm just going to switch it back, right? Okay. Different game. <laughs> Dan, yeah. Dan is really worried about pushing his vintage blues too much. Are you really? Well, that's. I don't know, man. That matchless is so loud. I know it says 30 watts. I, but I could hear these speakers just screaming out. They were absolutely caving in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I didn't hit the guitar yeah, too yeah, hard. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. All right, let's. Um, so let's switch all that about then. We'll go into. The Mesa front end, yep. and we'll start listening to the Matchless's power section. Okay, great, okay? great. As expected then, um, this works, the master on the Mesa works. Right. Because it's before the power section. Yeah, so that does nothing. The pre, this wattage selector's doing nothing. Yeah. The gain on the boogie works, obviously, because yep. yep. we're going into the front end. Nothing on the matchless does anything. Right, the cut should do something. Try it. Like a presence control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the only way we can affect this is by pulling this out and engaging the master volume. So now what we can do is crank the bejesus out of the, uh, out of the front end of this. That like is it? creamy and gorgeous. Yeah.
sounds that are caving in, I just struggle with so hard. Right. Because there's no, there's nothing here. Okay. <laughs> Either. No, just try with a bit of delay on it. I just feel, I feel like I'm fighting the guitar. Yeah. It's cool though. It, it's interesting. It might be, because I've done the, the Voxy thing for so long, and it might explain me going, <laughs> my tendency to bash the crap out of the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's just, for me, I'm used to, like, to twice that much headroom, so yeah, that yeah. when you play, the note's got somewhere to go, mm. but here it, it, it's just caving in. It's a great sound, don't get me wrong. It's a killer it's sound. A very that cool would sound. track beautifully. Mm. All right, so where are we? We're into the Mesa. We're using the matchless's power section and we're into the Vox speaker. So let's come so back to the this, yeah, Mesa speaker. Let's come back to the Mesa speaker and see see what we feel like there. Interesting. The difference in the power sections, you know, the six, the forty watt six V six of the Boogie, and the four EL eighty four thirty watts or thereabouts of the Matchless, mm. not as massive as you might think, or were you hearing it? I see more more bass in that last sound. Maybe it's hard to hear yeah. unless you can switch between them instantly. Yeah, I don't know. The, it would appear that the the power stage of the Matchless is pretty efficient. There's it's loud, you know. There's, it's um, it keeping up with the boogie, little little problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you want to hear then? I think we've done all the obvious, uh, the obvious combinations. Okay. Um, can I hear just the matchless pre and post, but into the boogie speaker? Yeah.
hold that thought. Uh, for the purposes of clarification, that was the matchless preamp and power amp and the box, box speakers. speakers at the end. So those blues, uh, I think they're a magical sounding thing. They don't have the headroom no. of a of that. So a lot of that breakup and distortion is the sound of those speakers just going, ah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, in a big way. Yeah. More so than I was aware of, actually. Because the the matchless cab that has a two by twelve with a green back, and I want to say a so G twelve H G twelve H doesn't doesn't do that doesn't do that doesn't break up in that way. No, it doesn't have that cry. But there's a, there's a part of that cry that I really dig. Yeah, it's funny because having cranked that AC thirty a number of times, a lot of what some at least of what I thought was transformer hum is actually is a bit speak. of cone cry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I want to hear mm -hmm. is a 212 cab with that Jensen 100 watt Alnico. As in two of them? Yeah, because I like that speaker. Right. That That is, the, the Vox I think might end up sounding, the Vox speakers, the Celestian Alnico Blues might end up sounding sweeter recorded. They've got a lot of overtone, they've got a lot of, but it's just too compressed for me. Sure. I like the headroom of a more powerful speaker. Mm. But, um, yeah, Kellerman. The, the only thing that didn't really work was the matches pre into the the power amp of the Mesa. To the power amp of the Mesa, yeah. I don't fully understand why. Because something's not quite happening there. Mm. There's not enough. The matchless. There's there's a there's a big level drop. And it's interesting because the amount of signal coming out of the effects send of the matchless is outrageous. Try it. We'll just, to finish off, we'll try it once more to make sure that I wasn't doing something idiotically dumb. Okay. Which, you know. Maybe try the other channel. Wouldn't be the first time. Let's, uh, we'll start where we were. Okay. So we'll use, what speakers do you want to use? The boogie. You want to use the boogie yep. speakers? Yeah. Okay. So just the preamp of the matchless. I don't really understand it because at that level that should be absolutely smashing the phase inverter on the on the boogie. Let's just try the other channel for a second.
Yeah, I don't really yeah. don't really get it. Just not hitting the not hitting the boogie with any any gusto, is it? Mm. Uh, we, we insert long tangent here about the variability of effects loops. There you go. Yeah. Um, I wonder if the loop has been tweaked so that it's not overdriving when you put delays and stuff in it. Uh, no. Because when I... On the boogie, I mean. Yeah, on the boogie. Yeah. Okay. But then there would need to be some way of making it up afterwards. But if you're plugged in the front, you've got the master. Okay. Because the master's completely out. Right. So anyway, it's conjecture. Um, what have we learned? That preconceptions are out the window. And they didn't sound so wildly different, did they? No, especially when they overdrive when the when the uh, power amp sections are working hard. Yeah. I mean when we did the the six L sixes and the EL eighty fours, they were worlds apart. Thirty EL thirty fours. The EL thirty fours, yeah. They were they were worlds apart. Those two are surprisingly close. More similar than yeah. than one would imagine. The yeah. biggest difference as always is the speakers. Yeah. And then one thing we found in the previous video was that because the EQs were very tweakable on the particular amps we'd chosen, that's where there was a huge difference yep. being made. Here, matchless EQ apart from the presence is completely out of the game. Mm -hmm. Boogie EQ apart from the presence is completely out of the game mm -hmm. when you bypass the, the preamps. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah. Any any Is there anything compelling here that you would want to take forward? The, the Jensen. Yeah. Hearing how much those speakers are breaking up. Mm. Like in the AC30 itself, when you hear those speakers break up, it's like, oh, that's part of the sound. When you hear the matchless, because it's, matchless is a tweaked AC30. Yeah, know, yeah, that's that, what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, this, that is so much of that Vox thing is when those blues are working. Mm. When hearing the matchless just using the the Jensen is like, oh boy, because mm. you get all that, you know, the love and power from the matches. But the clarity of that speaker, again, you understand why the, you know, obviously every section, the preamp and power amp, everything is, is paramount, but why amp builders take so long yeah, yeah. trying every speaker? Because I really don't think chainsaw you know, guy's back. the chainsaw guy, he's, he was <laughs> being very kind. <laughs> I'm getting. Uh, dentist PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but because I don't think you really know what amp, what speaker is going to sound great in an app unless you sit down and try everything. No. You know. And just a, a reminder that those effects loops in different amps are so can vary yeah, so yeah, wildly, wildly in terms of their send and return levels that just plugging stuff in and it, some days it's going to work and mm. some days maybe less so. But mm. yeah. I think in the last video. There were combinations I liked better yeah. than the than the standard amplifiers. Yeah, I really did like the Jensen with the the matchless. Yeah, but I me think too. That, yeah, um, but I didn't. There's no part of the boogie into the matchless into those speakers I thought was awesome. However, some sounds were there that you wouldn't have got from individually from those amps. Yeah, 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 and the boogie on the phone <laughs> once again. Stands up as a as a great machine, um, amazing machine. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Happy days, right? Happy we're, days. We are going to let chainsaw guy carry on to his chainsawing. I think he's actually trying to get in the roof. Is what's <laughs> happening now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon, and a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. Yes, please do. It's the main way we fund the show. Lots of stuff there. Uh, go there and pick something up. Thank you to our preferred retailers yes. uh, in the UK and Europe is... Uh, in the UK and Europe is uh, Anderton's Music of Guildford and Surrey. Why was that, so, because why was that so hard? It's reversed. Let's, shall, we, shall we swap chairs? <laughs> and uh, in Australia? Uh, our good mates at Pedal Empire in Brisbane, <laughs> Queensland. Click the description down. If you click on a link, buy something, we get kicked back off that and it helps us fund this show. Uh, do we say thank you to patrons? We did. Good. Um, yeah, I had a qualified success today. The last one was much better. Yeah, but I think we had to do this to yeah, know. To make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Worthy. Do try this at home, kids. Indeed. One word of warning. Two words of warning. One, your amp must have an effects loop. Two, the amp that's not using a speaker must have a load on it. So we were using 
that uh, Palmer power pad there to load the speaker output of the amp that wasn't driving a speaker. So yes. don't turn your amp on and turn it up without a speaker load connected. Indeed. We should put a warning at the front of the show. Yeah, yeah warning. Uh, 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 danger. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Danger. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.